Welcome everyone to episode 418 of Just Joshing. I'm your host, Joshua Pentaloresco. I write stuff in podcast two today. Part one of my two-part conversation with J.D. Estrada is live. I just wanted to talk to him. Like, I, I think... When you know you have someone that's genuinely a good person and you just know it from the bottom of your soul that this guy is a really swell dude, you want to do what you can to help him. And that's... And I was like, come on my show, man. Just come out there. Let's have a good time. And you know what? We did. We had a great conversation that kind of went all over the place. And, uh, yeah. You know what? It proved my point. J.D. Estrada is a great human being. And he really is. And this week, you're going to hear with this one and next one tomorrow. Or I should say Friday. Um, as we're just about back on track now. Um, I am literally, actually, very coolly. This is my 98th episode this year. Part two's 99, and, and this weekend's going to be my 100th episode this year. I've done way more episodes of the podcast this year. I've watched my numbers. My numbers have been, have been solid. Um, challenge for the next year is going to be scale. Everything I'm doing is all about scale. Um, that may mean I have to do more. Uh, I may have to get another day job short term for this. It's really just about investing in myself. But for the but all in all, man, that's, I think that's where I'm at. But anyways, let's just get to our conversation with J.D., shall we? This episode of Just Joshing is sponsored by Indie Imprint. Indie Imprint supports creators by creators. Whether you are writing a book or creating a video game, Indie Imprint works with its clients to produce, edit, and present their projects to the world. For more information, check out their website at www.indieimprint.com. All right, so Zoom's a, Zoom has been an, like my, well, actually, so I think I cracked freelancing. I think I did. I'm not sure, but I think I did. Uh, I haven't, and it's just, it's just such, a, such a hustle, man. Uh, oh, I love it. I love it. Because I, I, I do not, because one thing is, is getting a project. I can do that. Uh, another thing is getting a project and doing it and then getting paid. I hate that. See, no, see, I, I, I'm of two minds of that. See, I, I'm looking at this from, I've come to the point in my life, I cannot stand working for people. I just have come to that, that I've come to that point, um, because I don't, I, I realized this when I got to Vancouver, like when I was, I knew I was walking away from the job, like I knew it, that was part of it, but the other part of it was, I recognized the fact, like me, myself personally, that, um... I just, I don't have, the thing about a paycheck is they're, they're great, they're secure, but they, cre- they, they, they encourage a certain mindset because you know you're getting paid and because you know you're getting paid, now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying, I'm not saying your work habits work ethic isn't justified because everybody I know that's working for somebody should be making probably double. That's just my opinion, that's just the way it is, right? But. I, no, I've known a lot of hacks. Yeah, yeah, no, that's no, fair enough. But I, I, I think generally speaking, I think more often, more often than not, yeah. everybody's underpaid. So I understand certain degrees of that mentality. But for me, I want to be more than that. And the only way to become more than that is to put yourself out on a limb. I want a creative life. I made that decision earlier this year. I ain't letting anything stop me. The economy doesn't in one very real way, the economy doesn't matter because there's always going to be jobs, there's always work, and there's always going to be demand for certain skills. I've been building up, like for me, what I'm doing is I'm building audiobooks, and I already like like I can I can um, I've produced 400 episodes of a podcast. I can do an audiobook. <laughs> yeah, so. I can do an audiobook. It's not it's not a big deal. I've been quietly contacting people I think that would be great voices. So if I'm not the one if it gets to the point where my workload gets really big. Also there's a certain char- point of view characters. I don't I will voice a female character, but it, maybe you would rather have a woman voice a female character and I know a few very talented individuals that I one blew me away. She actually offered me at least at first to work for free. I'm like, I can't let you do that, but wow, that was sweet. <laughs> Uh, but that, that's cool. In terms of female, I've only seen one guy, one audio guy that, that did a female voice that I thought was at least acceptable. Have you seen the the, uh, the animated comic of for Watchmen? It's one narrator, and he does all the voices. Oh, 
Oh wow, that's impressive. That's impressive. And seeing him switch because it's it's not a, it's not a huge uh, method actor switch. It's it's a narrator switching between voices, like you know, him him being the grandpa telling the story to a really messed up child that can actually handle the story of Watchmen and the sex scenes. I know. No, it's it's it, it, it's. It's Watchmen. What can I say? Like, it's an interesting. It's just Watchmen's an interesting animal all the way around. I I think it's the pinnacle of what a comic book can be. I still yeah. want to do comics, but um, I realize like I've been quietly building up my resume to actually do audiobooks since March. I've been doing story time every week on my podcast. I've been doing my novel. What a way, good way to teach yourself a skill, right? And then I was like. I can offer this. I can put enough time in. And I can charge. I, I know what an audiobook generally goes for the work. If I do two of those a month, or even or one and a half a month, that's a living. And I'm still and I'm still doing everything I normally do. So why would why change? My main concern um, being in the states is healthcare and, and the cost of healthcare. It's just ridiculous, and that's part of why I still insist on a day job. No, I, 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 I go in the and they're, they're doing well but yeah, uh, a, good, a good example is, uh, is Joshua Robertson and I think he's he's switching back to, to doing more of their stuff but they've had to adapt a lot but the thing is that between him and Diana they have nine kids so yeah no I I, I get I, no, no, I get it. I'm by myself so for me like I, I'm very, like I'm low maintenance like, I don't have to worry about anything right now and even and even and down the road, even if that opportunity does come my way, right? I already know this too. I'm just the, I'm not the normal kind of cat. Like you, you've seen me on on, on 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 there. I don't do anything normal. So anybody I'm with is not going to be the run of the mill either. It's just uh, they're either going to be as crazy as me, or I'm the reasonable one. If I and, and granted, normally if I'm the reasonable one, we're screwed. But you know, I mean, it's a uh... yeah, but. Psychotic. Yeah, exactly. No, I don't know. No, I don't want. No, no. Psych, no, let's that, be different. You're functional. You're highly functional. Yes. You're peculiar, but peculiar is not crazy or or, or unpleasant at all. So. No, no, no. I I see the world in a very unique way, and I know right now it's annoying some people because I don't buy any particular narrative one way or the other. I'm just like you're all crazy. I just think you're all nuts, and you're not looking at this correctly at all. But. That's me. I but I am my own brand of crazy, and I'm big enough man to admit that I don't have all the answers to the universe either, right? I just have my own. I just have my own take on what's going on, and and, I, and I've always had that. So it's just like for me, it's just like I know that anybody I'm with is going to have to have not crazy because listen, everybody likes to fantasize about dating Harley Quinn, but the reality of the situation is if you date Harley Quinn, it's only going to be one date, and you're not coming out of it on the other side. So. <laughs> You know, for a one night stand, if you can survive, that would be great. Uh, yeah, yeah. But let, let, let's be honest. Not many of us are caught up enough to do, even do that. Let it, right? Most of us would last an hour. That's it. And I'm being very generous to most of us, right? 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 I mean, it, 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 you don't want that. You want someone that you don't want someone that sees the universe the same way most people see it. But you want someone that's highly functional and capable and hopefully has a little self-respect. As I've gotten older, I've I, 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 I realized that that's the big thing between 20 and 30. 20, you have no respect for yourself. 30, you, at some point in, in your 30s, you learn it. And then you're like, fuck it. <laughs> no, no for, for me, 30s, uh, the thing is that at the end of, of my 20s, I had like my first good injury, which I got a really bad neck spasm. And then when I, I checked myself out, um, I had a herniated disc uh, from, from bodyboarding, which is, is, you know, it's like surfing, but you do it laying down and things that most of the moves are high impact. Yes. And if, you, if you're not training and you're not healing and you're not eating properly and you're not exercising and you're you not get, stretching you and you're working the grind 16 hours a day and then go for a, for high intensity surf, you can get hurt, which is what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I had that injury and two years later, I, uh, I basically threw out my back. And, you know, I learned the hard way that you have to take care of yourself. And, yeah. And, you know, I mean, it was like at least four doctors wanted to, to get a scalpel in. They were like, oh, yeah, we're going to. Oh, God, no. 
like da- like down there that like yeah, like you talk about your medical your medical is absolutely terrifying on every single level <laughs> no but but be, be, beyond that uh the success rate for uh back surgery is about 50 50 yeah huh I, I do not like those odds no my, my my grandmother had back surgery because she she injured herself working at the ba- at a bakery and she fell right so her back just like like th- there was pain she wishes she hadn't done the surgery. Like she just wishes she like like because it, it it if it works it's awesome, but if it doesn't you're you're stuck because they they can't go back in there again. Like that's that uh, it. And, and they're just gonna make it worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And, and basically, um, it's like if you exercise, you can do this, 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 and that for a prolonged period of time. Not even that long, you're gonna feel relief. And I went to four doctors. And I went to one chiropractor, and with two adjustments, I was surfing the best that I've ever surfed. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. It's some, there are some chiropractors who know what they're doing. A deep tissue mass. I do tend to go with deep tissue massage more than chiropractor. The problem with the chiropractor is it does build up after a while. So. That's the only problem with them, but they are great. Like they, they know what they're doing, man. You feel so much better when you walk out the door. But the thing is that if you go to a good one, um, <laughs> it, it makes a world of a, of a difference. If you go to a bad one, it's either no effect or they can actually hurt you. And, and that, that's why and for everyone I say, make sure that it's someone that they trust and that and you have a conversation. And that you, the main challenge with chiropractic for me uh, the first time was just relaxing. Because they're gonna crack your neck. And yeah. It feels like it, it feels like you're letting um, a bad dam uh, do his thing and not resist it. So it's it's weird, but uh, just when you feel the, the blood circulating and, and stuff like that, you go like, wow, that that feels that feels different, and then you feel better. Um, again, it's a process, and it's not for everyone. Uh, I've never done acupuncture, but it's something that I've been curious about. Uh, what I haven't been curious about is pumping pills. No. Like, like a madman. No, 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 no one. No. Well, yeah, like I said, you, your your medical down there is frightening. Like that, there's no other way around. There's no other word for it. It's just frightening. Um, I I lived in this, like I actually lived in the states like for for a bit. I lived in Michigan and I lived in Arizona, so I lived in like the two poorest or two of the poorer states, and it it's amazing the like the. So from a Canadian perspective, no money up here is so different than no money down there. It's amazing, and, I, and it, it, you cannot do it justice. So you, you see, it's like, wow, they really don't give a shit about you down there at all. No. Yeah. No, they, they do not. And if you think those places were bad, uh, certain parts of Louisiana uh, and West Virginia are the worst. Yeah, I, I, I used to work in, in a Medicare Advantage company, and, and I used to see the numbers of what people, of what states would would receive in terms of funds. Because rather than it being the same across the board, some states are favored versus others, and the cost of treatment in this state is different than in this state. And it's like that makes zero sense. Um, West Virginia and Louisiana are it's bad. Uh, yeah, and, so- and then. And when you go to the rural areas and the lack of healthcare there, it's just you know. It well, no, r- 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 rural areas, you might as well, you better know how to take care of yourself because there, there's mm-hmm. nothing there's nothing out there that you you might have a competent surgeon, you might have some competent people that do alternative things. You're not going to find anything else out there at all. I was literally in the middle of nowhere out in Arizona, so I know, I know. <laughs> there's the, in Arizona's desolate. Yeah, yo. When did you live there? Because uh, I was about ten, it was about twelve years ago. So I'm not going to name names. If you look it up, you'll figure it out. But I'm not going to like like I'm not going to name names. You get someone I grew up reading. I actually got a chance to work for him, which was like a really cool. No, like you, like you don't say no to that. Like you just go in and you go for it. Save time. It did not work out very well between me and him at the very end. In all fairness to him, he did his best. Like, there's a lot of things that just did not go right that had nothing to do with him or me. It's just the way it things out. Where I think thought he, and I still think to this day, where he was a bit of an ass, was, like, settle things. Just come down to, like, get to the dirty, messy crap of firing my ass, settle things up, move on. Right? Just get it over. That never happened. And 
a lot of my resentment came from there. Now, don't get me wrong, I was no saint, but I, but that's where my my end where it started. Um, but um, I was there for a year on my own, and I and I talked about like it's actually a episode one forty of my podcast. You can actually listen to my whole that year by myself. I was so angry. I regret. I'd have more teeth, like more real teeth in my mouth, if I had laughed right after that. But I was so determined to prove something, right? Oh man, I went through the ringer. I went through the fucking ringer up there, man. It was, but it was a good lesson because it gave me a. Unfortunately, like actually, I, I say this in in a, a ruthlessness. Like I, I like I think I needed. Especially since I'm about to, like, I, I, we're the next phase of my life where I'm actually freelancing, making a career, trying to make a living on my own. You need to be ruthless, a little bit ruthless anyway. You don't have to be a complete asshole, but you gotta be willing to, hey, cut the cord, cut the shit. You gotta be ruthless. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and some people will try to dodge you, and you gotta be ruthless with people like that. Uh, in terms of me, my ruthlessness was that, um, you know, I would do the work. And if people were difficult, in terms of, of paying me what they owed me for months on end. Uh, as soon as I cashed the check, they were like, oh, we have another project. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you and someone else. And I would blacklist them. And people would ask me, hey, these people are looking for, for, for a job. And it was like, I'm not going to talk smack. This is what happened. They asked for something for uh, for, for this date. I, I gave it to them two days earlier than what they asked for. They were really happy with the result. They were so happy that they didn't pay me for eight months. And I'm like, up to you if you want to risk that. Yeah, I I have a very, very interesting way of like working my way around that. Um, it's, 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 yeah. So, I actually had to fire somebody. I've already fired my first client. Right? Wow. Yeah, I, I have that in me. And um, I just, there, there are, there are, I have four rules. I have Actually, I, was, I listened to a podcast this morning. I'm, I'm doing a talk about this. There are four of reasons to always the red flags to look for in clients. They're all fixable. They all are essentially fixable, provided there's communication. But if they're not there, then you just don't do it. Like the first one is um, the one that's almost impossible to come back, come from behind from is if they refuse to give you information. Right? If they do that, you walk. You just, just that, like that's it. I can't fulfill obligations. I'm done. Bye bye. Have a good life. I'm, I'm, I'm moving on to somebody else. And I, I don't even. There's nothing to talk about there. Emotional instability. Cause, okay, so for me, there I have three pet peeves. One of them I will, I'll put up with if you pay me enough money. I am that much of a whore. And I will be honest about that. But the other two, I will not. The first is, the first is. Um, passive aggressiveness. I will work with you with that. I hate it. It's a personal pet peeve of mine, right? It causes headaches that are unnecessary by and large, but it's not a deal breaker. It just costs more money to deal up for me to deal with it. I'm just, this is how I look at it. If I must deal with this, you're paying me for that headache. Right? It's, it's, it becomes part of the, the job description. Yeah, exactly. And I'd rather not. I just if you're gonna make me do it. You're paying me for it. I, I will do it, but you're paying me for it, <laughs> right? Oh no, I, I I have a built-in resentment meter in my in my negotiation. If I feel you're passive aggressive, the price goes up. I actually doubled. If I I actually doubled the rate on an advertise. Like uh, there was a, a potential client that wanted me to turn my show into a regular feature for some of his clients. I knew it was worth something, but I also knew he was passive aggressive. So I doubled what I think the, I thought it was worth if he had paid me. I'd have done it. He didn't. I felt better. I didn't feel bad about it. Right? <laughs> right? It's like, that, that's the, see, I, 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 again, I am ruthless. I, I am, I am very, very ruthless. I, I read the room. If you lie to me, we're done. I, I, I just, I, there's no, it's possible to save the relationship long term, but short, if you lie to me, we're done. I'm not even doing it. And if you don't pay me, I'll hunt you down. I'm, I, I'm, I'm that much of a, I am that much of a savage. I will find you, right? Um, I. Bowie knife. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I don't know. It's just I, 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 I don't like. No, no. See, I, I am very. Um, my dad, my dad's from Detroit, right? My dad's from. Right, like, he grew up. He was a Maltese guy, growing up in a black neighborhood in 1968. 
So I tell you, so even you, you, like, he, I'm diplomatic, I'm nice. To this day, my dad is probably a little rough. Like, you, I, I get the feeling you've, you've seen what, what I'm talking about. Like, there's a little rough around the ears. There's a little bit of that savage in me. I will, I will hunt you down. I don't really, I don't care, right? It's just, I, I, I will find you. And that's it. Like, I am, I'm ruthless and I'm relentless. And I'm like, you know what? You, fu- you fucked with me. I'm going to come after you. And when we're done, we're done. So, yeah, uh, number three. Number three, what was it? You said lying, you said passive aggressiveness, and. Integrity, not, in, lack of integrity, passive aggressiveness, not paying. So, those are the three that, those okay. are the three emotional, like, those are the three emotional. I, I just, I, my price will either go up or I just refuse to deal with you. Right? I, I, right, that's, that's kind of how, that's kind of how it is. I, I, life's too short, and I've learned a very valuable lesson. I believe your actions. Like I don't. I'm not even going to question it. I don't care. I, I truly don't give a shit. Your justification is your intentions. I will just believe your actions, and I won't feel bad about it. I won't like you know. I just say thank you, but we're done. We're done. Because I, I I have like I I think I have the right mindset for what I'm about to do. So no, for, for what you're doing. You're, uh, in terms of, of, of clients, that too often some people are extremely gracious, extremely grateful. Um, you pay super on time, and those people, it's like, okay, what do you need? When do you need need it? But and you're gonna get it done. I know. I've known to uh, to change up my schedule and to do some crazy hours just to help people out because they were there for me. Oh, absolutely. When I needed that. No, 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 no. no it, it's. Okay, so I'll, I'll mention, I've said this on my, I did a freelance a special on my 400th episode, but I'll mention those two people again. My two favorite people I've worked with so far, one was a 17-year-old pop singer. She had more on, no, I'm serious, she had more on the ball than I've seen people twice and three times her age. I'm not fucking kidding. I wish, if I had had that, what she's got, I'd be a millionaire right now. Like, she's, like, I, that one is going to go to the moon. The other one was Susie Vidori. I loved working with Susie. She was on. She was excited, enthusiastic. She went out of her way to promote her stuff. She just. I was such a professional experience that was like I went out of my way for her because it was like, when you know someone really wants it, it's so easy to work with them. When you have doubts, you you freeze, right? Well, one thing is doubts. The other thing is is having someone who's who's trying to to be sleazy and. and, and Without having a proper conversation, just to squeeze it a little bit more, just for the sake of it. It's like people who haggle. I hate haggling. I, 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 it's like for me, this is the price. We can, we can, we can have that conversation once in terms of adjusting, adjusting prices once, once. Uh, because I, I understand that people have different needs, etc. But people who are constantly seeing if they can get an extra stuff, I, I hate that. No, I, no, you, you walk. Here's the thing: if the job changes. Actually, so I think what I would do in that, like, I, I, I haven't gotten to that point that will, I know, eventually happen to me. And when it does, the first time it happens, sure, we'll talk about it. The second time it happens, like, okay, so here's how this works. You sign a, a, a guy, because I have, I'm going to have a, I have a contract, I have a contract I've already put together, right? So we can draw up a new contract. You can pay me another deposit, and I'll start from scratch. Or we can, I can finish the job, and you pay me for the job. Your choice. Exactly. And yeah. some people, you, you, you have to be you have to be that cut and dry. Yeah. Some people just don't know exactly what they need. And it's like, okay, you you, you talk to yourself. You see what you need, and then we'll, we'll work. And other people are just, oh, I want to get something else. Oh, I want to get something else. Okay, so, so, so there, there's the third reason why you fire a client. When they're not ready to deal with you. Like, they're, they're, like, like, like they're, that's the third reason, because... What happens, what happens there is, it's not that, I have, I've wanted to work with some really great people and they've been willing to work with me, but financially speaking, I wasn't ready to deal with them. And that's fair. I mean, I wasn't, I was not ready for that. And I can't be at fault to, for them to dismiss me as a client based on that. It, that's the way it is. Fortunately for me, it's the only, when I've been a, when I've been a client looking for a freelancer, that has been 
why no one wants to work with me. Not because I want, I'm unwilling to do the job. It's I'm just not. Re- I can live with not being ready for somebody. But there's two ways. There's two ways not to be ready. One is just I'm not at the financial or the, the level of the freelancer I want to work with. Or number two, and this this does happen, is they're trying to hem and haw and haggle and, and they're trying to look for shortcuts. And you're like. Ah. Yeah, right, and then and, and you walk, because you're like, you know, you're not ready, you're not serious about this, and like I said, I don't argue, I believe you, that's, that's, that's it, it's like, I believe you. Uh, I, I guess, but uh, again, if you have good communication, if everything's clear, etc., anything can be done, anything can be done. Yeah, now, d- don't get me wrong, jobs do change sometimes, it does happen, like sometimes the job you think you're doing ends up not being that job, it needs to be something else. And that's a conversation that does need to happen. It's like, okay, this is not that job. What do you want to do? And that's totally fair. Yeah, it, I, um, I worked for uh, Florence Chan for the watcher for Storm Dancer, and the job changed. I can't remember exactly why it changed off the top of my head, but she she was very professional. She came up to me and says, "Hey, look, this is what's going on. This is what I think you need. I'm willing to do it, but this is a different job." She's right. But you gonna do? And again, it, I think I think so many things boil down to people wanting to win. Or to, to, to it's like it, it, it is that it's that win mentality rather than a compromise, rather than looking for a solution. It's I won. I got an extra thing. I got my way. And it's like, dude, you know, that, that doesn't. For some people, that that does feed their soul. For me, it just just drains me to, 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 to get into in locking the horns like that. It's like, it's, it's... Well, yeah, no, it, it, it's, if you want to, again, if you want to fight me, I'll put up with it, if, I'll put up with it once, put up with it twice, and then afterwards I'm going to say, okay, is this what, I don't think, I don't think I can work for you. And it's like, right? Now, I am going to do this, because I'm watching, I, I think your economy, it hasn't cratered yet. I think that's next year, not this year. <laughs> We'll see. I'll just focus on the writing. No, 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 no. I, I get you. No, no. I, 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 I bring this up. I only bring this up. We don't need. To, we don't need to get ourselves depressed right now. I'm not here to do that. Um. But I think. I think. Um. What's important, and I wish I could have done this with the client I fired, is I would have given them a plan to make their to make their job as good as possible. I wish I had that. Looking back, I wish I had done that. Because I, I think right now that kind of service is valuable, and I wish I had done that the first time. Yeah, but that makes sense, and a lot of people, um, they got great ideas, but they don't have plans. And, <laughs> you know, again, you can have a lot of great ideas, but if you don't have a plan and you don't put it into effect, you know, what are you going to achieve? Yeah. Do, do, you want, do you want to hear my eight rules of success? Eight rules. I have eight rules. Rule one, show up. That's like the dumbest rule I ever thought I'd ever have to make, but it's so true. There's a, there's a, uh, on rule one, um, how many people do you know, I've got, a, I've got an idea. Yeah, yeah, you know, totally, I'm no, no. And, and I'm like, okay, you got an idea, what are you going to do? I don't know, and it's like, that's just respect. Yeah, 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 well, so rule one and rule five are the two that are broken the most, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep going. Rule two, do your shit. Again, sounds really fucking simple. But show up, do your shit. Rule three, the cliche, don't quit. Right? It's it, it's the cliche in there, but it's actually some people do break this rule. But honestly, it's not the. That's I don't feel this one's a rule breaker. It's more like, do you really want to do this? And and that's a fair question for everybody. I think. Right. Being being a, an indie author, I think a lot of people. Uh, Look at that question, and they think that that they're that they're ready to say, "I won't quit." And it's like, how long are you gonna are you gonna hustle it out? How, how many things are you gonna try? How many times are you gonna reinvent yourself? How many times are you gonna pivot? It's like, uh, it's like it's okay to not have an answer, but it, it might be a lot more than you think because people have this wonderful mentality that thing that things are gonna go to plan and life has other plans. Yeah, always. Rule four. And actually that's rule four it leads into rule four. The rest is rain. 
right? Life is out of your control. For the more often than not, it is. Right? But you can you can put yourself in the in as many positions as you can to succeed. That's all you can do. Everything else is everything else. But one... And, and you can do everything right and everything goes wrong. Yeah, exactly. And you can do everything wrong and everything goes right. But if you're showing up and you've done... And, it's the I think effort goes a long way. Even if you don't do it right, the effort really counts, right? Right? I I, I, I think it does. Rule five. This is the rule. I think a lot of people when they're, this is the other rule people break. Get out of your own way. That's a big one. Yeah, it is. Um, and the thing is that people think that there's only one way to get in your way, and there's. Yeah, no, I, I, I've, I've got it in my way, I don't know how many times, and, uh, until I, I check myself and I go, like, hey, stop doing this. And you stop doing this, and everything starts flowing, and you go, like, why did I do this earlier? Yeah, yeah, well, no, you, you, well, sometimes you just don't realize, I, I think for me, okay, so, I won the Aurora for my podcast two years ago. I might win another one this week, and we'll, we'll see. If I do, I have to wear a tutu. That's just, that's, that's, uh, that's part of, <laughs> he's laughing his ass off there. <laughs> The, the, the only thing is, the only thing is, the only thing is, I have to figure out how to do that because I, I made a deal with the devil, Pat Blowing's the, that devil, and it's her, her her call when and how that happens. So that that so rule six: be grateful, be charitable. Right. Rule seven: no excuses. People are more creative with their excuses than with their storylines. I don't get it. I know, it's fantastic, isn't it? It's like, dude, look at the plot twist that you came up with to justify not doing it. Mm. That, is, that is brilliant. Put that in your book and shut up. Yeah. And what's the eighth rule? Hold on a second here. I have them somewhere. I know where I have them, so give me a quick second here. Um, da, 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 da. I forget what rule eight is off the top of my head, but what do you think of the seven rules so far? They're spot on, and, and again, it's, it's stuff that people say, oh, that's so obvious, and I'm like, okay, how many of, you, uh, how many of those rules have you applied consistently? Yeah, well, that, like, again, I, I've learned that success isn't really about, um, success really isn't about, you know, succeeding. You're going to fail a lot, even doing all these things. What's important is, what's what I find is, what's important is, it's the fact that you're consistently doing them, you're consistently putting yourself in the position um, to, you know, succeed. Like, even if it does, like, even if you fail, you're going to fail a lot. That's, that's just the way it is. If, it's, if you don't take a swing, you're never going to get a hit. Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah. And you can be as prepared as you want. You can be prepared. You can have talent. You can have potential up the wazoo. And I, I, and I know a lot of people have a lot of potential. And I've told them, boy, like, you have a lot of potential. That means big. Yeah. Because you, I've seen people with who are hacks, but they have, you know, a level of success because they are relentless, because they show up, because they, they put themselves in, in, in positions where, oh, okay, maybe you didn't get a home run, but if you get a hit, you get another hit, and you, uh. run, and you get the double, you know, you look at your stats, and it's that, and, it, and people, they have this wonderful idea that they're going to get this grand slam home run, you're not always in a situation to get a grand, grand slam home run. No. And, and or to get a knockout. You know, you have to look for. I think I think boxing is a better analogy because you always have to look for a hole and you got to take a hit. So, so we, okay, I found the last rule. Do you want to hear it? Just stay uncomfortable. That's good. Yeah. Good. To give you give you three examples of me, me, me getting uncomfortable. Uh, first example, I went to, I was at, I, I passed by a bookstore, I liked how it looked, and I was like, I want to do an event, so let me just talk to the, to the general manager, just because. Yeah. No plan, no script, no, I'm going to say this, I just went in, look at, looked at the store, liked it, and I was like, who's the general manager? And I had a conversation, and three weeks later, I had a book event. Awesome, right? Really easy, right? People, people go like, was it that easy? And I'm like, it was that easy with another, with another one in terms of, 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 of a book event. Um, I had to go to a place three times just to finally find the, the manager or someone who could schedule me for that. And it is as easy as that. As that. If, if, you, if you come cowering and you're like, oh, well, I, I would like to do a book event and stuff like that, they're not going to take you seriously. And they're not going to consider you. If, if you're 
comfortable talking to a complete stranger, they're going to go like, okay, this person might bring me three people and they'll buy a book and we'll make 80 bucks off their little event and we'll get some exposure. And they go like, yeah, no harm, no foul. Do, do you know how I got Spy Robinson on my podcast? I asked him. <laughs> That's it. I, I, the opportunity was there and I, 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 I met him. I literally met like so the, the weekend I won the Aurora. I'm getting pinned, and this dude in the guitar goes down. And it's like, hey, Spider, come in. And it's like, holy shit, that's Spider Robinson. And I get my pin right when he does, right? So it's like, it's a really cool, that's a really cool little moment. So the next day, he, he did a concert, and he's checking out of the hotel, and I run into him. And I'm like, I'm giving him directions to get, to get out, right? Get out of the city. And I'm like, okay, fuck, I just, I just gotta, I just gotta do this. If he says no, it's fine. Hey, listen, I do a podcast. Would you like to come on my show? And, um, yeah, I got a phone conversation. We ended up talking about him having dinner at the White House. So we ended up having a conversation. Like he's like such a cool thing. I I just had a conversation with um, uh, let's see, Christina Z, right? The actual writer of Richland. That was fun. I didn't think I I I'd get into feti- to a fetish and ho- how to compare hockey and fetish and how they're similar. And it was like I asked, I asked, I met her, I met the met, and that's it. I I'm not afraid to put myself out there. I've asked. Brandon Sanderson to come on my podcast. I've asked Lights to come on my podcast. I've, I'm trying to get Alex Cooper to come on my podcast. I have no fear. No fear. No fucks given. If it doesn't work out, I'm in the same spot I'm in. Exactly. And, and, and again, people, people take for granted that. But you've got to be you know, natural and engaging. If you're natural and engaging, and that's where people think that, oh, yeah, I can do this. And it's like, can you? Go for it. Go for it. There's, there's an opportunity. Um, and if someone says no, just leave it be. Well, that's it. Thank. It was thank you very much. Like and that like I try to get uh, Diane Birch because I love her music. And I think she's awesome. And I'm like that would be such a cool conversation to have. And why not? Let's go for it, right? And they're like the manager's like, no, nah, we're not going to do it. Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much. And I'll be considering me down the road because again, gracious and re- gracious and rejection. A lot of people aren't know don't know how to do that either. But it's like. It's no for now. It doesn't mean that doesn't mean the next time I ask, I won't, I won't get a different answer. It may not be with them, but that's okay. That's actually a good point in, in terms of, of approach. You have to know when to be relentless. If, if you are persistent, you can <laughs> get a restraining order. Yes. Well, no, it, 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 it's, it's the thing is, okay, so I got in trouble over this because I, 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 I didn't mean it this way. It just someone got really offended, offended like thought it was a sexual connotation, not, like look at it from a sexual rape perspective, not from a opportunity. No is temporary. It is temporary, but that doesn't mean you, that doesn't mean you that doesn't mean you go after the same person until you get a yes and wear them down. No, I mean it means it means that when you get no, right, you move on to the next thing. There, someone else, someone else is sooner or later is going to say yes. Just it, right. That that's how it works. Like there, you don't stay in no forever. You don't stay with nothing forever. You ask for things, and things happen. And just that, that's generally how it goes. Um, yeah, I, I didn't mean it. Uh, I I don't mean break boundaries, but again, we live in that really bizarre, strange kind of world. I don't know. Well, people take everything out of context, or they they make a sport out of it. And eventually, I'll I'll have taken a picture, or I'll have said something that's going to piss someone off, and if I have any level of success, you know, you know, I'll, I'll be higher. Someone's going to go like, he said this in 2012, and it's like, it's a shit. Um, I don't know. They put a they put a lot of stock in, into what one person said, and X or Y, and and again, you look at the actions, look at look at the the trajectory and if it's someone who is a repeat offender or someone who is going out of their way to be awful you know you know go, yep. go for broke and and the thing is that with some people when they have a tweet or something that 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 is awful people go like what's that and someone says oh you haven't seen the rest they bring out the dossier yeah, oh no it, no like there there's so it, social media is such an interesting animal in this i i think I've actually come to the conclusion I like tr- I like tr- Twitter over Facebook. I actually I, I realize like in this time that Twitter is actually saner than Facebook. I never thought I'd say that, but it actually is. I'm not sure why. Depends. I think depends on on the topic and 
because there's a lot of crazy on Twitter. Oh, no, 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 there is crazy on Twitter. There's crazy on Facebook, there's crazy air. I, re- I, I just think that, that the character limitation <laughs> brings out something better in people. <laughs> well, yeah, it, well, it forces you to be, it actually forces you to think a little bit, whereas Facebook, you can just go. Psh- no, I, I, I'm I'm looking forward to next week because I start my first audiobook. I'm going to be pretty much shutting off social media for for. I think I'm going to be happier in life that I'm going to be on social media a little less. You know, I still I just gotta, you still got to advertise, which is a weird balancing act. Of some I'm trying I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> you know, it's it's a love hate with, with social media. I have a lot of love for it because I've met some really really special people, and I've been able I've been able to help and be helped by by people that that also. Oh yeah, absolutely. In, in, in an organic way. You know, there's obviously going to be snake, you know, snake oil salesmen. There's obviously going to be bitcoiners. There's obviously going to be, you know, Russian profiles sending you private messages that you can like block. Yes. Um, Make that mistake but, just one time, but anyways. <laughs> they, they told me that they were going to send rupees, and I have no rupees. Uh, yep. Uh, but uh, or rules. I think that. I don't know what the coin for Russia is, and I will not deny my ignorance. I have no idea, and I have no interest of knowing, by the way. Yeah. No, I... I no, I, I actually got my first. I actually got my first email scam. I haven't seen in live. Hey, I have big inheritance. Please contact me for more information. I hadn't seen one of those in like ten years. I'm like, they're back. Yes. No, no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I. I hey, listen, my li- listen, my in- my internet. I figured this out. Like, I already know this. In the far future, the 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 these kind of conversations will be on some data file somewhere, and they're gonna wonder what kind of strange people we really were, and they're gonna be right. Like we were strange, weird fucks. Yes, yes, we were. That's that. There's no question about that. But the other thing that's going to survive is our advertising. Our advertising is going to is apocalypse proof, baby. There's going to be spam bots all the way to the end of time, till the no, internet shuts down. It, it, it's sad. It's like what is what is the legacy of, of planet Earth? I and mean, it's like I don't know advertisement for hot dogs and galactics. Not Pez. Like, it's Pez. It's totally Pez. I think it's past. I actually, so here's the thing. I had, I had this great thought, and I put it in my book, Storm Dancer. They come to this trash bin, and they pick up, pick up a pest dispenser. And they didn't know what it was. I mean, I mean, the, any like with any other time but now, the pest dispenser kind of looks like a horrible contraption to sit there and think about it, right? It's like an illustration of how a tracheotomy is not Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. No, I mean, it's horrible. But yeah, I, I actually it made me realize something really, really important about about history. I think for the most part, the like the things we misunderstand were probably something as simple as a pest dispenser, a toy for children, and that's a wonderful thought actually. That maybe the things we don't understand were the things of joy of another age, and I think that's a really cool thought. As we grow older, we just complicate things that don't have to be complicated. I do a lot of silly stuff because it makes me laugh. And I yeah. go, you know what? I'm going to share this because if it made me laugh, maybe it'll make someone yeah, else laugh. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's a ton of stuff that I do, that I do like that because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 40 um, and I, I don't care because, you know, sure, age is a number, but you, the, the pieces get more expensive to replace if you break them. Yeah. <laughs> But just because of that, you know, I, I grew up uh, hanging out with my grandfather. My grandfather loved cartoons, and I would watch Popeye with him. I would watch Bugs Bunny with this old Cuban who was you know, in his 70s, suave as hell, um, always well-groomed and whatnot, and he loved cartoons, and he loved to play tennis, and he loved to do a lot of things, and he loved to yeah. enjoy life. And well, it's like, if, if you get enjoyment from life or eating fruity pebbles on your ice cream, why the hell not? Well, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, well, you know, I have to, I have to up my fiber intake. Like, Fuck off. Chill. Yeah. Chill. Chill. Yeah. Well, it's, no, it's so, good to have balance, and it's good to have health, and, and to promote that. But to, to deprive yourself of enjoyment. What, you, what know, you, you know, I I made a decision. This this might get me in trouble next year, um, but I'm okay with it. I've actually made I made my peace with this decision. After about after about. Next summer, I'm going back on the road, regardless of the, regardless of the conditions out there. I just, I just, for me, 
this might get me in a lot of trouble. I realize that. Going, uh, I realize that, but I also just really like, don't care. As I've gotten older, I realize like it's it's now, it's never. That's that's literally my mentality. If I'm going to enjoy, I'm going to do the little things in life. I I'm going to enjoy, because I don't know how long I have, and I have to make I have to make the most of. I'm going to die. I mean, I mean, the one thing about right now, I mean, no matter what anybody says, the one thing that actually the virus has not changed is that truth. One day you're going to die. It's probably going to be painful. That's just the way it is, right? In the meantime, in the meantime, though, it's what can you get out of life while you're living? I'm more concerned with living than dying. All right, I, I've already made my peace. With, I've already made my peace that I'm, that that's going to happen. Like I said, I went straight into when this happened. I went straight into acceptance. Okay, let's make some money. I don't really fucking care. I mean, that's that was my attitude going into this. So like, I didn't have to grieve it because I've been. I again, I've had my ass kicked. I don't. I don't care. And I don't mean that in like the like I don't give a fuck kind of way. I mean it in that I've been through this ringer. It's not what people think it is. People are grieving it right now because they, they for a lot of people this is their first time going through this. For me, it's like. No nah, man, I'm going to make some money. I'm going to I'm going to go out and do the things I want to do. I'm going to reinvent myself right now because I can. And then next year, no matter what happens, I'm going to go out there and I'm just going to do my thing. And I don't really care what I have to do because I'm going to do it my way. I don't need anybody's permission. And if they tell me I can't play in your yard, it's okay. I didn't want to go in your yard to begin with. I'm just doing my damn thing, right? Right? And and that's and that's how I, again maybe that's the wrong attitude, but it's my attitude, and that's where I'm at in my life and. Because I don't, again, I don't know how long I have, and it's a little bit, it's not the big things in life that really that you're really going to remember. You're not going to care what house you had. You're going to care about the, the people you that were in that house. You're going to care about your kids, your wife. You're going to care about the people you love. You're going to care that you did the things you love. That's it. Not much else fucking matters. Let me help you tell your story. I offer a variety of audio services. I will narrate, I will produce, I will edit, and I will master your file so that it will be ready for audible and spotify and if you don't want me to narrate your story whether you want to do it or get someone else i will help you find the right person for the job all in all i just want to help you tell your story let me help you for information on my rates and services please click the link below in the podcast description jpentelleresco.wordpress.com for more details and that's part one of the conversation and jd has a really good answer don't worry we're gonna get right back to that probably we'll start right where i that whole statement about making the little things matter because really the little things are all we have right now and that more than ever definitely definitely impacts kind of what I'm doing and seeing and, and where I'm going for it so anyways this is part one part two will be Friday so I'm going to just wrap this episode up by talking about a couple small things L0 is out it is out it is available feel free to go to pick it up it's on Amazon the cloud diver is still out as well um I only got three more readings of the Cloud Diver, guys. I'm kind of excited that I'm near the end of that. So what's going to happen after that? It's really simple. Um, I'm going to be I'm going to be releasing a uh, a special pre- preview. Do a Tarot by Brad C. Anderson is something I'm working on right now, and uh, I'm going to have a little preview of that in about three weeks. And that's going to be cool. And then I'm going to start doing a few of the seminars from When Words Collide. Uh, they're going to be airing live. Advertising for the apocalypse. Maybe in this uncut form. Because it's just an interesting thing. How Zoom can go wrong. And I have a... Me and Zoom have an interesting relationship. And yeah. But anyway. I'll get to that in a bit. But for now. That'll do it for this episode. Just Josh. And if you want to support the podcast. You can do so in a number of different ways. Subscribe to the podcast. I'm on every app, application on demand. iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, Deezer. Um... You know, my show's awesome, and I think people, more people need to hear it. So let people know I'm out there. That's it, my link on in my applications. Like, click a like, share, subscribe. Number one. Number two, my books. Uh, the Cloud Diver and Al Zero are available now. Cloud Diver by Lance Vaughn. It's got a cool, has a kick-ass cover. It's available on Amazon exclusively for one more month. It goes wide in October. Al Zero is now available on Amazon just came out the day before. If you guys support some epic poetry, go for it, do it. I'm back doing that. Hopefully, the second of my three books planned this year, so I'm excited about that. Got merchandise. jpentelleresco.redbubble.com. You want to buy a t shirt, mug, support the podcast that way, feel free to do it. If you want to uh, hear what I'm up to, subscribe to my newsletter. 
My YouTube channel is Joshua Pentelaresco. My Twitter and Instagram is at jpentelaresco. Go say hi. But above all that, guys, stay inspired, and I'll talk to you again soon. Josh. Shush.